Hello everyone, Joel here from Golf Monthly. I hope you're well and welcome to this special video where we are conducting a battle of the speciality lob wedges. And these are no ordinary lob wedges. These are the funkiest looking lob wedges you can get, but they should give you a bit of kind of extra unique performance. That's what we're gonna find out in this video. So make sure you watch right to the end. We've got the new Callaway PM Grind 2. This is a creation that Phil Mickelson and Callaway worked with Roger Cleveland in creating to kind of help him hit those three shots that he loves to hit, the high flop, the chip and run, and then the kind of chip and stop, the one in between those three trajectories. And then we've got the Ping Glide 3.0 i2 wedge now this is obviously a throwback to the i2 irons ping have brought it back they've arguably pioneered this kind of high toe shape back then and they've reinvented it with modern technology and um, with this glide 3.0 i2 design starting with the ping you can see we've got this kind of elastomer behind the face to soften the feel and we've got uh, new design grooves here to give you a bit more extra spin obviously it's a very funky looking shape which we'll come on to in a second and i've got this in 58 degrees of loft with eight degrees of bounce and then moving on to the callaway pm grind 2 um, the specs aren't exactly the same unfortunately this is not a perfect world we live in and we didn't get the exact same spec this is 60 degrees of loft in 12 degrees of bounce and this is in the kind of tall gray finish so slightly darker finish on this one um, we've got uh, Callaway have put the kind of grooving groove technology on this face so micro grooves that are angled at 25 degrees kind of this way running up towards the toe of the face to give you a bit more spin on those open face shots um, we've got a C grind here on the sole as well so it's going to give you a bit more versatility especially you know some heel and toe relief on those open face shots and you've got full face grooves on this one so you see the grooves run all the way up onto the end of the face and into the high toe whereas ping they're a bit more traditional in that you've got kind of a classic hitting area there with the lines either side so before we have a hit with these around the green here on the course let's take a look at the gc quad data we got uh, yesterday at foresight sports hq to see if we can detect any initial differences in performance between the two actually before we do that let me just remind you to click that subscribe button up there to make sure you don't miss any of golf monthly's equipment review videos so you're staying right up to date and also click the like button down here if you like what you're watching okay so let's quickly look at the gc quad data we got yesterday i hit full shots with both these wedges and also kind of open face pitch shots just to see if the differences in the design especially in terms of the grooves being higher up the face on the callaway would make a difference to the spin and i guess given the differences in design and spec you'd probably expect the ping to spin a little bit more on full shots because there's less loft so the ball is isn't sliding up the face perhaps as much as the Callaway um, but let's let's talk about that because interestingly you know on full shots the performance was really similar the ping was launching slightly lower but the spin was basically exactly the same at just over 11,000 which is incredibly high the carry distances were very similar as well which I wasn't expecting you know you've got uh, the ping carrying at 79 and the Callaway at 77 so you would expect obviously the ping to carry you know five yards further given it's uh, two degrees stronger in loft um, but they're actually quite similar potentially down to differences in swing speed and strike and things like that. Um, but then we move on to the open face shot. So I was trying to open it around about 25 degrees. You know, I was trying to open it exactly the same on both wedges. And, you know, the Mac Daddy was definitely launching higher, which obviously you'd expect that it's got a bit more loft. Um, it was spinning less, you know, it was around about a 2000 RPM, less spin from the Callaway on those open face shots. Although there were some shots that did spin at a similar level to the ping. It was just more on average the Callaway wasn't spinning as much. So I think the proof is really going to be in the pudding in terms of testing out the course. Let's find out and start testing them out on the golf course. Okay, so we've just come to the fairway here, just short of the 16th green here at West Hill. And I suppose now's a good time to just clip a few away and talk about the looks of these wedges and also how they kind of interact with the ground, what feelings you get as you strike the ball uh, on this shot. So I think obviously, first of all, looking down on the wedges, there's some clear differences here. They're obviously both triangular in shape, the Callaway probably more so. Ping is probably a little bit more funky looking with that really high toe shape 
big kind of cut-in section where the heel part of the face meets the hosel. Um, and this one definitely looks like it's got a bit of a chunkier top line than the Callaway. The Callaway looks like a bit more kind of thinner in its design, arguably a bit more orthodox. Obviously, you've got the full face grooves here, which do make it look a little bit bigger than it possibly is. So uh, let's clip a few away. Um, we'll start with the Ping i2, the Glide 3.0. And obviously, having done some testing already, so I've actually hit a little bit behind that. But what's a good example that you can see, I've actually hit a bit behind that and there's hardly any divot there. It's a little bit of a bruise of the turf. Um, whereas compare that with the Callaway, which actually technically got more bounce. So this is technically a 12 degree uh, bounce option, um, slightly higher loft as we've mentioned. But if I was to hit a pitch here, you can see I've taken more of a divot here. And that's what I've found in all my testing is that even though this is slightly higher bounce, there's a bit more relief on the back of the sole and in the heel and toe. So, especially on slightly longer pitch shots, you know, with 30 yards and more, you'll definitely find you're taking a bit more of a divot with this club. So arguably it's suited more for those golfers with slightly shallow angles of attack. Uh, conversely, you know, if you're quite steep into the ball, off these tight lies, the ping I2 is definitely going to give you a bit more margin for error. Okay, so this is every golfer's worst nightmare. You've short-sided yourself, you've got no green to work with, you've got a tight pin, and you're on a kind of bare, tight lie you've got to flop it up over this mound uh, these are the clubs potentially that should be able to do that but what i would say is that they, these do play very differently in these scenarios so you know first of all the ping you know because the sole is effectively a bit wider it plays a bit wider kind of less relief especially in the there's a bit of heel relief but not quite as much as the callaway in terms of how it effectively plays you know when you open this up it, the leading edge does rise up a little bit more from the ground not much in it but i would say you know, the Callaway is arguably a bit more versatile in these scenarios. You know, when you open the face up, you do feel like the leading edge is still sitting quite flush to the ground, which should help you get the club under the ball a little bit easier, he says. I mean, let's give it a go. This is not an easy shot. It's on a slight down slope as well. But we'll give it a go. So this is the Callaway. So just going to open the face up on this 60, Phil Mickelson style, hit it pretty firm. Okay. Pushed it a bit, but it went up one under nicely, and it's given myself a putt for a par. Uh, obviously, off the slight down slope, it's gone to the right a little bit. And then conversely, try and do a similar lie for the ping. I just feel like it's going to bounce a bit more on this type of shot if I open the face up a similar amount. Not too bad. Probably a better result, but you can see had to be a bit more aggressive through the hit, especially to come down to make sure the club didn't bounce. So it's just something to be aware of. Uh, on this type of scenario, the Callaway probably just about edges it. Right, last, but definitely by no means least, is the all important bunker shot. These clubs are being billed as being really effective out of bunkers. So I think it's about time we give that a go. Um, starting with the Ping I2, like I mentioned with that kind of more effective bounce, you'd think this would be very good at stopping the club from digging down into the sand and kind of gliding through it certainly looks like it should do that so even if you do catch a little bit heavy you know providing your leading edge isn't too sharp and you've got it open um, with some added bounce this should be very effective at getting the ball out of the sand let's give it a go i love the kind of thud sound that makes when you hit the sand and even though it probably hit took a bit too much sand Still didn't have any problems getting the ball out. Arguably would have liked it to have gone to a bit, a bit further, but still, I uh, feel like there's a lot of margin for error there. Very forgiving through the sand. Let's try the Callaway here um, with a similar sort of shot, similar sort of lie. Um, like I mentioned, with that kind of less of, of playing effective bounce, especially, you would expect this to possibly dig a little bit, but you know, with a bit more loft, you've got to be a bit more committed with the strike, a bit more speed there, so that should help get the club through the sand and as long as you've got the face open I think this should still be pretty effective from the sand so face slightly open committed through the shot definitely a better result or oh, a little bit of grab there as well a little bit more spin I think that's definitely one of the things you're probably going to get from this Callaway uh, Mac Daddy PM grind too is you're probably going to get a bit more spin from the sand just because you are open in the face. You know, you've got some more grooved area up in that high toe section when the ball's rolling up the face. Uh, you're probably going to see a bit more spin. And if you do opt op for a higher loft like this, you know, you can be a bit more aggressive through the hit. Like I was there, I was a bit tentative with the ping. 
Callaway got it up much higher. You're going to get more stopping power from the height as well as the extra spin as well. So not much in it in terms of um, the, the bunker shots. I would say, you know, if you're an edgy bunker player, you'd struggle to get the ball out. The ping is probably going to give you a bit more margin for it. But maybe if you're a fairly good bunker player, I would say the Callaway is going to be a bit more versatile and possibly give you a little bit more spin as well. OK, so hopefully that's given you a really good idea about what these speciality lob wedges are all about, the kind of performance they offer, how they differ, and potentially guided you into the one that might be best for your game. Uh, like I said, these are only very small kind of niche options within you know, the Mac Daddy range for the Callaway and the Ping Glide 3.0 in the Ping. Um, but I think they're, they're two very different styles. And then depending on the way you attack the ball and the kind of shots you want to hit with your lob wedge, you know, you, there are two distinct options. You know, I tend to mostly use my lob wedge basically for bunker shots and flop shots, which is a tricky one for me because the Ping I2 wedge definitely is a bit more kind of forgiving out of the bunker whereas the Callaway is definitely more effective at flop shots around the green if you're opening the face up and you've got a kind of tight lie, it's definitely more effective at getting the ball, the club under the ball. Um, if I had to pick one, you know, that's the kind of battle that we're doing in this video, I probably would go for the Callaway. I feel like it's given me a bit more versatility in around the greens. I feel like the Ping I2 does tend to bounce a little bit too easily, which some people will like. I would say my attack angle is quite shallow, which means I don't really need a lot of bounce, therefore, uh, the Callaway, even though it does say 12 degrees of bounce on this 60, I feel like it does sit a bit lower to the ground, even when you're opening the face. And I feel like I can hit a few more shots with it and potentially getting a bit more spin on those open face shots. We know the launch one of the data didn't necessarily prove that, um, but given these aren't like for like spec, spec it was difficult to tell exactly. Um, but two very good offerings, you know, the ping definitely giving you more forgiveness on the strike. Um, it's funky looking, but it does help you on bunkers and I think there is enough kind of heel relief there if you wanted to open the face up you could do and um, you know generally the spin control was pretty good as well so there really really wasn't much in it it all comes down to personal preference on I would say looks as well as the type of shots you want to hit and whether you want to open the club face or not you know a lot of golfers out there won't want to open the club face and therefore with that ping option is going to be right for you I suppose the only way that you're going to find out which one is best for you is to give them both a try and let me know how you get on. Thanks guys for watching. I hope you really appreciate this video. Click the like button if you did like what you're watching. But for now, from really sunny and warm West Hill Golf Club, it's goodbye.